All right, welcome everybody to uh, the, the, the interim. Um, just a uh, reminder that this is an official ITF meeting for the working group, so um, uh, the note well applies. <clears throat> Um, so some administrative, so if, uh, we've already gone over the note well, um, if anybody is willing to help with minutes, that would be great. All we're really looking for, whatever action items or important points might need to be jotted down. Um, mostly looking for a backup in case I end up inadvertently dropping. Uh, if you're looking for it in code EMD, I can help. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Russ. <sighs> and looks like we've got almost nobody in Jabber, so let's not worry about that. And um, if you haven't already, please add yourself to the uh, attendees list in the minutes, and we'll turn those into the blue sheet. Um, and then we can move on to some agenda bartering. All we're really looking at for today is talking about the various uh, issues and discusses on the documents. Um, is there anything, anything else we want to talk about? All right, with that, um, Let's see, we could start with um, Vince discuss on, on message recovery for the struct document. Yes, I was thinking about this uh, recently, like in the past day or so. And I guess my core question or issue is really, what are we actually trying to say about signatures with message recovery? Um, because we sort of say that like, we would like to do this, but it's not, it doesn't really exist right now. There's, there's not a mechanism to find. Um, and so like, if we just want to call out that it exists or that, that it might exist for Kose in the future, that's one thing. But if we're trying to actually specify what the interface for it would look like, that's maybe a little bit different. Um, and to get a little bit more into the details, you know, if we say that the message content that's transmitted is going to be, you know, some subset of the original input message because the other bits are in the signature for recovery. Um, we do say that if you have multiple signatures on the same message, they all have to support recovery and use the same number of bytes. But uh, it seems like there might actually be a stronger constraint in that they all have to take the same bytes of the input message as what they recover. Like, is it, is it the last bytes at the end of the message, the bytes from the beginning? Uh, we don't say anything about that. And if we're gonna allow for the case where there are multiple signatures on the same message and we use signatures with recovery, uh, we kind of do need to constrain what the interface is gonna be so that all of the signatures are compatible with sending the same, um, message sent and so it just sort of feels like I, I don't have a clear picture of what we're trying to do my initial shot at this was i wanted to make sure that people were aware that these existed um because i've been trying for a while to find one that we could use in the iot world understandable be quite attractive there. Uh, and so I, I think if, if that's all that we want to do, then some of my concerns about the details not quite being nailed down would, would potentially go away, provided that we tweak the wording accordingly. So 
So like if we if we say that there are two signature algorithm schemes, the first is signature with appendix and the second is signature with message recovery. Um, that sort of seems like there are two signature schemes that are two signature algorithm scheme types that we can deal with. Uh, but if we're really trying to say that there's only one that we have written up yet, but we want to support the other, um, then maybe we need to say a little bit more about how, in general, in the abstract, there are two types. We are going to specify the first type here, um, but we leave open the option for expansion and specifying the second type is future work. Is that sort of consistent with what you were imagining, Jim? I have audio now. Yes. Okay. Um, my computer told me I, I lost it. Um, so initially the idea was just to tell people that it existed. Um, and then I ended up tossing in a couple of things simply because I, a couple of things to look at simply because I thought of them at the time. Um, I'm willing to, to remove those out, although I intended them to just be, these are things you might have to think about. Sure, and I'm happy with these are things you might have to think about. Um, I What I was seeing is, is problematic is if we were actually saying, like, you can just go off and allocate a code point for a signature algorithm and you're expected to be able to uh, implement something and, and have it interoperate. Because I, I personally am not confident that I would, I would be able to do that with just the text that's here. So I'm happy to see us um, reframe it as more as this. this is something to be aware of that could happen in the future, but it's not currently defined. Okay, so you want something more beyond what is in the last paragraph of this section. Right, because uh, I think that, at least on my initial read of it, it was talking about like, we only have algorithm code points as opposed to we only have the procedures specified. Uh, and you know, maybe I was just misreading that and I should shut up. But uh, that was sort of where I was coming from. Well, I definitely would not want to say that we have the procedures specified. Okay. Because, you know, you end up with having to do things like what I discussed in the in the email I sent out, which is, oh, well, what I'm doing, the, the, the RSA PSS version, you know, I flipped my content, so I was stealing the end bytes because that signature algorithm steals lead bytes. Um, and there's also some some lineup issues that need to be dealt with by the first person who does this. Yeah. Uh, so I think. So if we add a paragraph which says we don't have, there are no algorithms currently defined, and there may be some dragons in defining those algorithms that need to be specified by the first such algorithm. Yeah, I'm already, that what you're looking for? Something like that. I, if I was writing, I would probably say it is expected that additional specification will be needed for how to integrate signatures with recovery into the COSA ecosystem. Uh, but I think that's functionally equivalent to what you were saying. Do you want to list the issues that we do know? I think that it's probably good to document, yes.
Okay. That's that is relatively easy to do. I can probably manage to get some text on on the mailing list this afternoon. Excellent. I mean that I will try to look we for don't it. end up having any problems at the winery today. Say again, assuming we don't have any problems with at the winery. Ah, uh, yes. With uh, the winds yesterday blew about twenty five percent of one of our roofs off. Oh wow. Hopefully, I don't we have need to go some counter to signatures that. on the roof then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we need to get the roof fixed before it starts raining. Well, uh, when is the earliest the rain is predicted to arrive? I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like it might be a while, which is not great in the general sense, but helpful for the roof issue, I guess. <laughs> well, in, in a general sense, if, if it's raining and we're not processing food, it's, it's academic. Yeah. Okay, um, so I can get some text on the list for that issue. And once you've said, yes, that looks like what you want to see, then we should be able to get this cleared and go forward. I think so, yeah. I don't think there are any other issues on the structure document. This is Matthew Miller. I, I agree with that. I think all the other ones have been cleared up with the uh, with the latest text um, effectively removing counter signatures. Oh. That is one of the things. People, please look at it and make sure that the text I put into the document saying why we stripped counter signatures and pointing forward is acceptable. I, mean, I took a quick read myself yesterday, and it seems okay to me. Um, but I. Um, more feedback would be welcome, please. All right, anything else regarding um, the structure document? All right, take that as a no. Um, I believe the, with the hash Alex document, um, Ben still had a comment. Um, the latest draft may not reflect all of his changes. Right. I think it's just, I think we had just have one thing, which is I, I managed to not pull one, one sentence from the document. Um, I plan to go over that this afternoon too, um, and get that one updated. Um, and that should be the only issue on that document. Uh, the X509 document, I have a list of changes requested by Barry. Uh, my intention is to cover those tomorrow. And then it should be able to go to the IESG. Uh, the last document is the, is the initial ALGS document, has a whole slew of mail from Iana that I need to go over. Um, ben did respond once to them saying, it may not make sense to look at this document by itself. You may need to look at the structure document as well. I have a feeling that's what most of the issues are. But I've just kind of ignored that mail so far. So hopefully I will have updates to all four documents. Four documents? Yeah. Um, by Saturday. Yeah, and just to jump in, and this has been again, um, it was my sense that all or almost all of the IANA questions with the ALGS document 
would be uh, would disappear if they had read the struct document first. But I wouldn't swear to that because I did not read their email entirely carefully, and I also read it quite some time ago. So my memory is not perfect. Well, you read it more than I did. I looked at it and said, "I'm not going to deal with this right now." <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Okay. Um, anything else? I have one in the other business document. Um, Elwig has produced a 25519. Oh, God. What, which, what's the name of the curve? N words, Montgomery, virus draft. So it's one that starts with W. Yeah, Worcester's draft. Draft. Um, which is now in DE review. They want to have these algorithms as IETF approved algorithms. And I want to know if anybody has any objections to that. And I guess to jump in, the, the algorithms are in DE review, and I think the document itself is also in ITF last call at this point. I believe so. Um, personally, I find the document next to impossible to read. And I keep wondering if it should have come out of CFRG instead, but. Right, uh, so a similar question came up uh, in a different context. And I went and looked through my mail archives, and I believe it got a review from the CFRG crypto panel, maybe 18 months or two years ago, roughly. But I have not looked at how much the document has changed, if at all, since then. Yeah, this is Russ. I think I did that review. Um, and uh, I did a look to see if they addressed the issues I raised then. I did not do a complete read. So the look that you did to see if they had, re had fixed the issues, that look you did recently or you did a year ago? No, I did that about a month ago. Okay. Thanks. And I assume that they issues were addressed or at least apparently addressed or you would yeah, say? Yeah, no, but they... they they rewrote a lot of parts, and so they, they did address them, but they may have introduced stuff as well. That's what I did with that. I see. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, my assumption is since we're since it's the 25519 curve and the 448 curves, there shouldn't be any problems with making it IETF yes on recommended, on recommended. But I just wanted to see if people had any objections to that. I mean, I guess a related question is whether it is weird to have ITF recommended things that are like both for, and I'm probably going to get it wrong, but if we recommend both the Edwards form and the Weierstrass form, I guess that's somehow saying and that. And the Montgomery form. Yeah. All three of them are there. Yeah, but my point, the, I believe the whole point is that you get the same answer regardless of what form you use. Was going to be my question. I thought I thought that this was an Elwig because it it just told you a different way to store the point so you could do the math faster or something. No, so that you could use existing libraries. Okay, so you could use existing libraries, but that the the answer the answer from the signature was the same as if you hadn't. My right. understanding is that is not true. Uh, okay. That's what I thought the whole point of it is. Yeah, and that's and why it was my Elwig. understanding is you have to do the. the coordinate conversion in order to get the same answer. So if you compute it using the Weisserstrasser, you have to then convert the Weisserstrasser points to Edwards in order to get the right answer, the same answer. I'm not positive that's true. And I never that, got a clear does answer. Does that defeat the savings by converting it? Conversion's pretty fast, so not necessarily the code size may be uh, worth it. So, so some people might just say, "Screw it, we're just going to stick with Wehrstrass and transmit that 
but but many people will say no no i'm just optimizing my calculation and library use and i'll convert the point and have a standard have the old standard from the registration point of view there are two different algorithms so the fact that the answers are different is not an issue right but it's because the reason for two registrations is you're transmitting different bits to represent the same point on the curve depending which form you transmit it in but if you uh one side the point is that one side can't unilaterally decide it's going to do it in this this form without informing the other one in a protocol That's yes right. and no yeah, they can convert it, do whatever library they have, convert it back. That's fine. Right, right. But, but that's slightly less efficient than if they decide they're just going to propose it. Right. So with all that, is there any, does anybody have objections? Kind of sounds like no. Okay, I'll deal with that document then. And if I could back up to a previous talk that briefly uh, I was skimming through a bit more stuff about I guess the IANA comments and I was noticing in my comments on struct that um, the IANA considerations for the uh, which registry was it I think the KDF algorithms Maybe it's the header algorithm registry. I think there was one other registry um, that I think we had the registrations for in the wrong document. And that may have also been something that I was confused about. Uh, that is extremely possible. I That's part of what I was needed to go through on. OK, excellent. I just wanted to remind you that that was a potential issue. Yeah, I went through that once with them, but I, I know that I needed to go through it a second time. Okay, yeah. Um, any, any, any other points, anything else? Uh, I had two small comments for Jim about COSIC, the counter signatures. That was going to be our next question. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw that you posted the countersign document, I guess, I don't know if it was yes, last week. I guess it was the ninth, the fourth. Um, I guess, did you know that the contributing to this document points me at the original document GitHub, and maybe you didn't actually push the GitHub for this one up? Um, I haven't pushed this up into it. I just haven't pushed pushed the document up into GitHub. It's going to the same, it's going to be in the same GitHub registry. It's going to be GitHub in the same GitHub uh, repo is what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, in section, um, Three, um, you use the terms co-signature, co-sign one, and co-sign. And I thought co-signature is the signing object that we create. And so I don't think I would ever apply a, I'm unclear if I would apply a counter sign signature to just a co-signature. It's the, the third, the last paragraph. One, two, three, maybe the fourth sentence. When done on a co signature or co sign one, 
And I'm just, I'm just trying. I was just struggling as I doing like, do oh, I? Yeah, do I, I need. I, to, no, I screwed that up. I need. Okay, to so, up. so I just was like really confused as I read it. Like I went, wait, maybe this works in a different way than I thought. Um, so then I realized it might be a typo. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will go through and clean that up because that's 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 messy. Yeah, that was my reading codes. of the document was like, yeah, okay. I don't know. So most I, of those code signatures should be um, signer, not signature. Oh, no. Co no. Cosign is the base structure. Cosignature is, this, is the structure which actually holds a signature. So co-signature and co-signed one both actually have signatures in them. Cozy underscore sign is the structure which does not have any signature, which just has the payload in it. Hence sentence five in the last paragraph. Am I making any sense? Yeah, I just was speaking to my muted, my mute. <laughs> Am I making any noise? So, Jim, you're taking the action to clarify the text as it currently is. Is that what I'm hearing? No, the text as it currently is is correct. Michael had the structure names incorrect in his mind. All right. Okay. Any other points? Has anybody read the counter signatures draft yet? It's still on my plate, to, admittedly. I have. You don't count. <laughs> okay. Michael counts? Yes, Michael counts. He didn't write it. <laughs> but hope that he read it. Uh, did, are you asking, did I read it? No, I haven't finished reading it, but I am reading it. All right. Um, well, uh, strongly recommend others also read this and provide feedback. Um, I don't know that we've got a specific timeline right now. Um, but do please uh, read it and, and respond on the list with any any uh, any comments or questions or points of clarifications. Question. Um, Yes. For Jim, I I haven't read the the struct update, but have you referenced that document from uh, on the struct document? Yes, I have. Okay. Which I did. I I should need to go up and look again and potentially send mail to Henrik that. At least at one point, it did not actually generate the reference up on the XML to RFC site. I don't know if it has yet. Okay. 
I think that the bibliographic, the BibXML stuff that's hosted is like generated by a cron job that might be only weekly. I thought that it generated a new thing on every document submission. I could be wrong about that. I, I don't have a good source. I have noticed it take a while in the past. My memory is it's done at every document submission. There's a event triggered and then weekly there's a cleanup to make sure none of the events were missed. I'll choose to interpret that as you're both right. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else? I, I'm still. I'm going through the struct document right now, and I'm finding the um, references, or I'm just searching for counter signature, counter sign, and I'm finding stuff maybe in appendix that. But I, I was sent comments about that to him. Yeah, that was one that I was not really too sure what I wanted, what the best way to, to clean that one up was. So I mm -hmm. didn't touch it. It probably needs to be fixed, right? I mean, Appendix well, A, uh, it's guidelines for external data authentication. Right, but the guidelines don't change any. It's just we're not talking about counter signatures in the document, but it still mm -hmm. is important for counter signatures. But it talks about the uh, the counter signature attribute. Ah, uh, does it? Okay, that would definitely need to get cleaned up. And the last, the sec yeah, the second one is also in the same um, appendix, and says uh, about. Uh, two contexts are distributed as a pair. So, I mean, that, that's fine. That is about uh, you, what second context is, is used to place a counter signature. It doesn't actually talk about the counter signature, um, like the cozy counter signature. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this is why I needed another pair of eyes on it is because I left that alone because I didn't see a better way to do it. And if someone has a better way of doing it, Please help. Yeah, that yeah, I'm plan on reviewing this soon. All right, thank you, Francesca. Um, last last call for any other any other issues to bring up. Joran Salanto here. Um, the, the topic for next COSI meeting, uh, is that uh, entirely devoted to the counter signatures or what's what's the plan? That is a great question. And that was going to be my next question to all of you is, um, we currently do have another hour scheduled in two weeks. What do we want to use that time for? I'd love to go through the charter. Sounds yeah. like a great use That's of time. Good. That's good. Um, and I probably should actually read the certificate document if we're really going to pull that into the group. So we got a bunch of comments from from various people uh, during the summer. We haven't really um, put those together into the into the document. So and that was the reason why I would ask if, if the CBOR certificate is coming up, uh, we need to prepare that, uh, but we haven't done that yet. I 
I'd like to sit on the counter signature document for longer than two weeks, I think, because I want to actually finish doing implementations. And I'm not too sure how much time I do and don't have over the next couple of weeks. I've got one implementation done, but I haven't done that second one. I think that sounds fair. Um, I've heard a couple of people talk about wanting to discuss the charter next week. Is there any objections to that? And then we hold off on counter signatures for a little while. I think that uh, it's two weeks, right? Not next week. Two weeks, yes. Um, you know, that's enough time for people to read it. Maybe at least we could raise issues, even if uh, it's not fully baked. Any other thoughts? Okay, um, so here's here's what I propose. Um, the next our next meeting in two weeks will focus primarily on charter discussion. Um, but if there's anything to talk about with counter signatures, I can we'll definitely spend at least some time on that. That um, does that sound okay, acceptable to everybody? Yes. Sounds fine. And we will not be asking Jim where his implementations are just yet. We get that the roof comes first. We had the first fruit come into the winery yesterday. And we're not, we weren't really all cleaned up yet. Oof. Okay, well, with that, I think we can declare the meeting officially over. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.